Hey, it's Andre, and it's time for another Friday Flying Update. You can never have enough jets. That's right, FMS Yak 130. I had a need, a need for speed. Yeah, <laughs> full of cliches this evening. Actually, uh, this is uh, this is a timely uh, addition to the fleet. I've been looking for an extra EDF, uh, of course, because you, you need more EDFs. But I was looking for another jet that was compatible with my 6S um, 3300 packs, and it just happened that the you know, 3300s, it just happened that the Yak fit that profile. Actually, I had been looking at the FMS Super Viper, uh, the blue one, which is a very attractive looking aircraft, but it doesn't come with fla with flaps, like pre-installed servos and flaps. And I'm like, why would I spend the extra $20 when the Yak has it? So I just decided that I would pick up the Yak. And accompanying my uh, uh, free wing 70 uh, millimeter Hawk, uh, be a hawk. Um, I think these two aircraft will do me just fine for the summer. So now, if I ever get around to doing my uh, flight test Vigan, I would have um, two 4S EDFs and two 6S EDFs. So I think the EDF lineup is good for the summer. I may opt for one or two more. Uh, you know, something in the 3S, like a 64 mil, and maybe another one, depending on how I feel for my May trip. Or I might go really ridiculous and add, uh, you know, another FPV ship. We'll get onto the FPV stuff in a minute, but I do want to look at the FMS kit. And, you know, this box is actually, uh, sometimes you appreciate how, what kind of engineering they do uh, for the package. And what got me was one of these wings. One of these guys was really well thought out like look at that like another whole piece like the fuselage was in the box and then one of the wings is encapsulated one of the wing pieces are you know locked in and and ready to be installed but it's you know it's secure so that's pretty cool so i'll do a bit of an unboxing with it later on uh this weekend depending on the weather because it is going to rain so there's no flying unfortunately but last weekend i actually did get away and do oh look at that little little bomblets fuel tanks these it's a really nice airplane ah there we go got it out that's pretty nice and i, I i've done one or two little touch-ups on the paint and so you know things like packaging getting to it uh the tape and everything where's that other wing let's have a look at this i've wanted to uh, look at this jet all week whoops there we go look at that nice uh, this will only be my second FMS aircraft, the first one being the P-51B, the Dallas Darling, uh, I think that's what it's called, the Dallas, and yeah, uh, and it flew fantastic, minus the landing gear wheel coming off and the pilot landing like crap, but we won't talk about that, right? Um, I'm looking forward to, to, to wiring this guy up and uh, just enjoying having another jet in the fleet. Uh, two red ones, uh, it wasn't really intentional, but um, it is kind of neat looking at the differences between the FMS bird and the uh, the Hawk versus the uh, the Yak, but uh, the Yak is a little smaller, I think a little lighter, which is fine uh, because it will fly in the 3300s and I'll use the big 62s in the, uh, in the free wing uh, Hawk, so it's just, it looks great. I mean, it's just, you know, it's something different. Um, you know, it doesn't have the sprung suspension like the other aircraft, but then there's a slight price difference in it too, I suspect. So, all right, moving on to last weekend. Last weekend was actually pretty productive from a flying standpoint. No, there was no flying Friday, Friday update. And that There was reasons for that. And I'm not going to get into all that craziness because it's another week. Getting that box out of the way so I don't step on anything. Um, but I flew a whole Oh, whack of my FPV aircraft and had a good time. I got out and I actually flew the Grand Tundra on the 3300s in some pretty big wind. So I'm getting more and more comfortable. Now that there's no snow in the way, I've really been able to get used to that airplane and just work on my landings because I kind of just, I'm used to like the lighter stuff, the lighter airplanes and just bleeding off that power and floating in. Well, this one, you've got to kind of maintain that power level. So it's it's a little warbird-like, so it's just me getting my, my head around it and having some fun with it. But I was flying in some wind, no flaps, and just working on just managing throttle and bringing it down and touching down and, and having a really good time with it. And then there was a whole load of FPV flying. I flew everything from the Talon. Um, 
I want to work on the Talon. I was finding I must have had, you know, between the camera and the battery position, I was really having to give it full elevator up to keep it going. And uh, in the wind, it's it's a bit of a football. It's a bit of that that frontal area, I think, was really holding me back. And it, it was bouncing around a lot. You, know, you can see from the onboard video as I'm just jostling around in the wind. But uh, I'll get there. Um, I haven't been flying with the flight controller. I find that one... I don't know what it is about it, but I just I just don't enjoy it. It doesn't need it almost, I would have to say. I'd love to uh, sit down and start programming uh, the iNav, but I have so many other projects that I need to get to. Um, next on the flying list, so <laughs> this thing is awesome. Uh, if For those of you wondering, this is the video aerial system uh, biplane Gremlin. Now, I'm probably going to pick up a triplane this summer when I see Alex at a, in Ohio. Um, and I am running the tri-blade on it. This is a little 1306 2300 kV motor. And I got three minutes, sorry, <laughs> three minutes, eight minutes off of 2S500. So I was just flying around FPV, having a good old time, zero communication issues, zero range issues. And it was like poking around in the wind and just having a really good time with it. So I'm impressed. Uh, it definitely works well at the field. In the yard, I tried a two-blade prop, and I think it was just a little too fast. Uh, but you have enough throw and authority that it almost feels like it has ailerons. I'm going to have to try some rolls and loops with it next time and just see if I can really, really push it. But it was it was good to slow down, and you just kind of cruise around. Yes, you are getting a lot of prop in your, in your image, and you get used to that, and you just fly away, and you recognize what you're flying on, and just you have a good time with it. Um, I did not get to fly... The Tomahawk. Unfortunately, I had an ESC issue and it just did ground at the aircraft, so I never got this thing in the air. It's all set. I've swapped out the ESC for something I had and I've uh, requested another one so I can just run it on 4S. Right now, I've only got a 15 amp little one in there, so I'll fly it on 3S and I'm sure it's going to go like crazy. But unfortunately, the weather, like I said, won't cooperate. If uh, we have a break in the rain, I may get out with something like this because the field shouldn't be too soggy and I can land it, I think, without like getting everything soaked up inside. You do have all those inputs, so maybe it's one of those things where you bring it in and you catch it, so who knows? And then the last one, which I actually didn't get to fly FPV with, and I kind of regret, um, but I didn't have a spotter. <laughs> it's the 900 mil Tech One FPV ship. Uh, this was sent to me by uh, Motion RC, and I waited all winter to fly it because of that cage design. It's it's a good design, but when you're dealing with snow and everything, and your you know, your receivers inside there, your ESCs inside there, it was too much of a risk. Now, the sound, the sound that T motor makes is crazy. That's an F80, and uh, it's a three bladed prop. I think it's a five, yeah, three by five by five, and a four S. And it, I put the video up there and uh, like launch, it was nothing to it, like quarter stick and it took off. There's a bit of weight behind the, behind the wing. It's got some material behind it, um, but it also flew really smooth. I basically put in some normal settings that I usually do for a wing, nothing too crazy. And it was line of sight. I had zero issues. The onboard video that, that I, that I posted it looked great. It wasn't until like I was at like full stick that you would pick up any kind of vibration. And I never balanced the prop, so. Uh, um, but the sound it made was like, oh, it was. It's a little loud. It's a little crazy. I almost obnoxious would be a good word, I think. But it balances out and it flies. And, I, and that was with an action cam on board and everything. And it. Uh, so I can't wait to go FPV with this thing and just have some fun with it. So it is a good solid wing, and for the price, you get quite a lot. Like. You know, the wing comes apart and everything if you have a really good bang up. And then, uh, you know, the, the spares kit's like $6. Uh, so you have some options when it comes to, uh, you know, this aircraft. And if it does get bent up, it's pretty easy to put back together. So uh, I will be flying this a lot more. Uh, so stay tuned on this thing. So I, I've uh, just stuck a kit on there, my FBB kit. And I'll probably get brave now and cut it in and drop it in. So it's got even better airfoil. Uh, an air profile, but uh, nice piece of kit actually. It surprised me. I wasn't sure it was going to be a hit, and it surprised me. Um, I even got out and flew the DLG, which was hilarious. I had had flown the DLG, my mountain hobby, in a long time, so there it's good just go. to chuck that around. Um, podcast last weekend went really well. We talked to um, Andy from uh, 
um, get FPV, discuss the industry and some really neat things. And so it's ongoing. I have a ton of projects, a ton, a ton, a ton of projects. I've got those two wings, uh, the Apex and the, um, and the Defiant 28 that I really want to get at least one of those ready for my May trip. I'm now starting to think about the end of May when I go down to Ohio to fly with Chris and Mike. Uh, and and have some fun and so i'm really i think we're gonna be doing a lot of fixed wing wing fpv uh and some smaller ones i did the other week get this guy look at that i got an inductrix plus and it is fun around the house you are definitely flying a little bit more mass but uh this will be having some good times and i'll pick up some more of these big honk and 1s 500s um but for the may trip we're slowly building up what we want to bring uh and decide upon and i'm kind of you know the gears are turning as far as what i want to bring back do i want to get another jet we've got some review ideas that we want to do uh, uh but we're we're definitely building up that list so this weekend is obviously going to be a build weekend with the weather turning to wet and icky so i do want to like i said uh get that wing going and then there's a giant spitfire which i want to spend some time gluing and if you saw the video from last weekend yeah the smaller clear ch uh, spitfire lasted all of 10 seconds so even though i had put in like 30 40 grams of extra weight up front in the, uh, the battery tray it wasn't enough and uh, it took off and the aircraft was all over the place i did what i could to save it and it just clipped the ground and shattered the wings blew apart the fuselage just kind of went poof and that was it for that airplane so that's parked aside i've decided that i probably won't print another spitfire uh, maybe I will do another fuselage, but it's got a, and this was with a bigger motor, uh, better power setup and everything, and it still was very unpredictable flying-wise. So I'm going to go with uh, flawed design, not even flawed design, just tail-heavy design, and move on and probably look at something like the Jug, a later aircraft that they produce where they address some of the servo placement issues so it's not so tail-heavy. So that just means more printing. I do have two other airplanes that were sent to me to print, so eventually I will get into it and uh, keep printing but as summer comes along i'm focusing on the fleet uh obviously i'm going to be building up yak the hawk has got that uh insert kit that i need to do and i'm going to because the cheater holes are on the bottom of the hawk i'm going to put some mesh in there and get those two aircraft all ready the field is not ready for a uh, fixed uh, fixed landing gear aircraft i did fly the corsair last weekend and it was really nice but even that with the rough field gear was getting tossed around pretty good and a few aircraft got beat up pretty badly because of the ruts in the ground and everything so we'll let the temperatures come up let everything smooth out and everything get rid of some of that mud and have some good time flying so there we go wow that's a long one i'm andre thank you for watching have a fantastic flying weekend talk to you later